Uh, coach, you know, you've, you've been on the biggest stage. You've won college championships. I mean, you've done it all. Where does, you know, Saturday's atmosphere kind of fall into all that? Well, I, I told everyone after the game that, uh, that I've been a part of games in front of 100,000 people at the Rose Bowl or at the Coliseum or in Europe or in South America. But the atmosphere at Spanos on Saturday night uh, was, was electric. And I really believe that, um, and I've seen a lot of college soccer games throughout my career and participated in a lot of college soccer games, and that had to be one of the finest games that I've ever been involved with and had the pleasure of, of, uh, of coaching. And I think it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, rivalry in the country. And I think the game stood up to the billing, uh, two outstanding teams giving their all. And uh, thankfully, Cal Poly came, on, uh, came out on top with a, with a great finish from a great cross uh, from Jack O'Connor to uh, Cody Wakasa. So I, I really think that they would probably, in, 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 in all the games that I've seen, it had to be in the top two or three college soccer games, if not the best college soccer game I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, going into the game, I mean, first time you were involved in the in the blue green rivalry, did did you kind of uh, expect it to be that electric, as you said? Well, my son graduated in the School of Architecture here, so I I did come up to see a game a number of years ago where Anthony Grillo I think scored the the uh, the winning goal, um, and on that night in that moment I I sort of got it, you know, but. It's a lot different being a fan than it is being on the bench. And certainly, uh, we don't condone uh, fans running onto the field. But the reaction of the, of the fans and of the community was incredible after the game. And uh, again, to see them celebrate with the players was truly special. Uh, you know, the points now you trail UCSB by one, you, you face them week and a half from now, uh, I mean, how important not just was, was it for you as, as far as a first-time coach to win that blue-green rivalry, but, uh, but for the standings as well and just, and just moving up and getting that first-place spot? To be honest, I don't even want to talk about Santa Barbara, quite frankly, because we have Sac State tomorrow night. And, and it really, it is the old adage that you really must take one game at a time. And I realize how important that this rivalry is for both communities and, and for both institutions. But the three points that we play against uh, Sac State t tomorrow night are as important as the three points that we just won on Saturday night. So I, I, I've been telling my players this is so very important that the games around uh, the Santa Barbara game are games that are as important, as much important as the as a, as a Santa Barbara game. And so I. I really need to stay focused on that. It's been my message to the players. Um, and to think otherwise would be uh, ludicrous because Sac State just came off a win of uh, beating uh, Santa Barbara 5-2 to two at their place. Uh, they tied UC Davis in their last match at Davis. Uh, so they've scored six goals in two games, and, and we have to pay attention to that. How do you, uh, I mean, coming off this huge win then, what's, what's kind of message, what do you tell your kids to kind of, you know, get them to come back down to earth and get them focused for uh, Sacramento? Well, I tell you what, uh, Chase Minter said it best today in practice and, and that uh, they were almost, had the exact same record uh, this time last year. And they went on a four game losing streak that prevented them from getting into the conference playoffs. And he reminded the team of that. Um, and as a coach, it, it's always fantastic when your leaders step up and deliver the message that you want to deliver as a coach. So uh, Chase said it all and was supported by the other three seniors. And they lived that experience last year. They don't want to live through that again. And I think they're very focused for tomorrow night. Um, after the, when you were going into the second overtime and the game was still tied, kind of what was going through your mind um, from the coaching perspective of how the game might play out? 
What went through my mind is how much it hurt a few days prior to that, playing against Davis in the same situation where we lost the match, uh, literally four minutes into the, uh, the first overtime period, where just a single lapse of concentration caused us to lose uh, three points. And uh, so we reminded that of the players, and uh, we told them how important it was to take calculated risk but not undue risk. Um, although I didn't tell the players this, to come out of there with at least a point, uh, given that at the time they were ranked ahead of us and at the time had a higher RPI, that would have been beneficial just to get a tie. But um, I think having felt how, how devastated they were after the UC Davis game, they used that as energy and as motivation for them and certainly playing in front of 11,000 plus people, cheering them on and wanting to not let them down uh, played a big role in the, in the win as well. Does it still feel as big as, I mean, all these Im impressive national teams you've coached and professional teams, does it still uh, mean a lot to you when you win a game like that that's a close game? <laughs> I'll tell you, I was uh, as nervous the day of, the, of, of that game as I've ever been. And I don't think that changes if, if, if no matter what level you coach at, if you, if you truly want to win. And, um, you know, and I've been blessed to be able to be a part of some massive games, but that was as massive and as exciting and as special as any game that I've ever participated in. So refresh my memory on the playoffs. How, how is it going to work? Is it like two teams from the Northern Division, or how does it work? The top three teams from each uh, division qualify, North and South. The top team in each division get a bye. Uh, the second place team in the North will play against the third place team in the South. And the opposite is true for the other side. And uh, so depending on how you advance, will determine you know where your next match is but if it comes down to uh, a north and a south team being in the final in the north by virtue of the fact that we had a better record the four teams in the north had better records than the teams in the south the north will host uh, the final match anything you're going to do differently against sacramento state i i think a, one of the biggest mistakes that santa barbara made was to rest a number of their starters uh, prior to them playing against uh, sac state we're not going to make that mistake. We're going to play our very best team against them. We have an enormous amount of respect for them and should. Um, and then after that, we'll worry about the next match. But let's get the three points now. Do it with our very best team. Hopefully, you know, try to get out to an early start, God willing. And, and if the game goes the way we hope it does, uh, give people an opportunity to get some rest. But I know how hard Sac State is going to fight in this match because they, they desperately need the three points as well. Thank you.